Hey, what's going on, everyone? I am here today with a good friend of mine. His name is Albert Zertucci. He is the owner of Hard Life Bait and Tackle here in Corpus Christi, Texas. So ever since moving here to Corpus, I don't know how to fish all of a sudden. I lived in Florida, and I was pretty good at it, actually. I mean, whether I was fishing offshore, whether I was fishing you know, from the beach or from a pier, it didn't really matter. I could usually catch some fish. Here in South Texas, I have struggled. I go out and I catch trash. That's pretty much it. And it's usually kind of comical trash because you look at it and you're like, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna keep that. So I threw it back. Anyways, I have been looking for a way to educate myself on the type of equipment you need to go out and really catch fish. So I was next door and funny thing is, is Hard Life is directly next door to Iconic where I did all the reviews on their F750 and their Ram 5500. And I ran into Albert a while back and we became friends and he's been constantly inviting me to go fishing so he could teach me some of the tactics and techniques and tricks to do it well. Albert is a former Marine. Well, I'm sorry. He is always a Marine, but he used to be in the Corps. So I definitely appreciate your service. Thank you, sir. What am I looking at here? What are some of the advantages of working with you? What are some of the reasons why someone should come in here and buy equipment from you versus say, do what I used to do, go to Walmart and just grab every other thing off of the aisle until you had a bucket full of stuff that probably wouldn't work? That or you talk to somebody asking for someone to help and they sit there, oh, well, this will work, this will work, and this will work. And you end up with a whole bunch of tackle that sits in your, your tackle box. You end up never using it because you start to use something and it doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and this doesn't work. Well, when it came up to Hard Life's Bait and Tackle, I named it for that reason because I've been in your shoes. I've gone to tackle shops over here, over there, from East Coast to West Coast, and asking for help. What do I need to catch fish? Most of the time, it's some young kid doing the awesome thing of working, trying to get themselves through school and stuff like that, but have never really gone out and done the fishing themselves. But when you come to Hard Life's Bait and Tackle, none of my workers come to the front unless they've actually gone fishing with us and have put the gear to use to where they know it works. They feel it right here and they know it right here. So that way when I talk to you or you ask me a question, I can give you a direct answer, okay, like drum fishing. We've got drum leaders here that originally started out with one color. But as you can tell, we've got blue, we've got yellow, we've got brown, white, baby blue, and stuff like that. What we started doing was now customizing it to our customers that like to, a little flare. The flare does not distract the fish from biting. We have found the ability to make a great leader and encompass making a customer more personalized fishing tackle. With these leaders, you can target everything from black drum, that's mainly the reason why we built them. But they also, with using the fish bites in collaboration together, you can target every fish under the sun. And we're talking from whiting, sand trout, redfish, black drum, pompano, skipjack, jack crevel. We've caught shark on them, bull reds, big black drum, and the list goes on and on. So you're naming all sorts of different fish that you can catch with this. Is this regional specific or if somebody up in, let's say New York is wanting to catch one of the fishes you named, can they use this same type of equipment, let's say in New York or California or somewhere else they may live? We have shipped these leaders to the East Coast from Florida all the way up to New York. Um, we've got a lot of positive feedback, but we cannot ship these to California. On the West Coast, you cannot have the barb on the inside. It can only be on the outside or no barb at all. So if that were to happen and you wanted to purchase these leaders, what you would have to do is mash down that barb so that way there isn't one oh, okay. there. And they're still very capable of catching fish without the barb, which we have done intentionally here on the Gulf Coast as well, just to prove to people that it will work. These leaders, we go out and fish and we see a problem with what's going on. Say we have a whole bunch of runs and not enough hookups. Well, that's not really fishing, that's feeding the fish. I went out there to catch something, pull it in, and be able to take a picture and or take something home to eat. With these leaders, we have been able to target, like I stated earlier, all kinds of fish, and even with no barb, still be able to land fish with it. So behind Albert are the leaders, and right here are the weights. Now, one of the cool things about their weights are that they make them themselves. So that's a unique characteristic of dealing with them as well. They have all sorts of different designs. So what would something like this be used for? That is a claw weight that you would use in a high current area. What ends up happening is as the water is traveling up underneath it, it'll get it to sink. If you've ever stood on the beach with the sand and water running through your feet, mm -hmm. you'll notice you start to sink as well. 
With these wigs, because there's an actual gap there, it helps it to sink a little quicker. And because of that reason, they're actually pretty good weights if you're going to be in a high traffic area with water current, versus going to an actual surf weight itself. This will be a lot easier to pull in versus using a surf weight. So, you know, one of the things that I always have issue with is knowing what is the best weight to use for different scenarios. So, Albert, what would be your most popular weights and why? One of our most popular are the pyramids. The reason being because when you're fishing in the surf in the sand, you'll see your triangle there, which is basically hard to make it tip over. It won't tip. What ends up happening is the water current is hitting your line and producing water weight. What that'll do is it'll get your weight to move and slide across the bottom. If you have multiple lines out, they get tangled up in that sense. With the use of a pyramid weight, it'll reduce the chances of the water weight moving your line into another line. Oh. So it just helps keep you from tangling up with other lines that might be out as well. That is correct. I mean, if you're fishing by yourself and you don't mind your line moving, which there's a lot of Carolina rigs out there that have an egg weight and it's intentionally designed like that. So that way it casts out, gets in the current and it's moving and it's kind of actually trolling the water with the bait. A lot of times you're fishing with multiple people around us, so we don't want our lines to move. And that's where we'll use a weight like this. So can you explain to me when you would use a coin weight? The coin weights are real popular for grassy areas. What ends up happening, there's a lot, there'll be a lot of seaweed and we use these a lot in the bays as well. Because once it lands, it'll get wedged in, in between some grass, but the grass is not strong enough to hold your weight there when you want to break it loose, so you'll pull it right through and it won't pull a lot of grass with it. If you're using a pyramid on that area, it would build up around and you'll bring in this big old glob of mud and grass. When you're doing that, you're also destroying the grass habitat of where fish will hide. So a coin weight would be a lot more recommended in that kind of sense. Okay, so that's really for any fishing environment anywhere, right? Anytime you're running up against grass or tall weeds or anything underground that you could snag on, a coin weight could probably just help prevent all that stuff from clumping up and building on your line. That is correct. It, it'll allow it to catch in there but still be removed. Now, if you're working in an area that has a lot of rock, then you'll go to more of a pear weight, a bass weight, because this will catch in the rocks too. And being able to, to pull them through, a lot of times this will slide up in between cracks and, and get up from being caught in between the rocks. But you don't want to use that in a real soft environment where it's hard sand or hard clay, because all it's going to do is drift over into somebody else's line. More than likely your own, because you're going to have at least two rods out. So this is called a surf weight, right? That is correct. Could you explain to me? what this is specifically designed for, how it works. Okay, with the surf weight, what it's designed to do is your wires will bend out, they'll come out and they'll angle up a little bit. As your weight comes down and hits the bottom, with those legs out, your line weight will pull pressure on it, tilt your weight sideways, and these legs that are gonna be out in a four pan area will actually grab your sand and will keep your weight in place under heavy current. This is a 1 8 gauge 11 ounce. We also would have it in a lighter gauge which would be a 116. As you can tell, these wires are a lot thinner. So if you're in an area where you have current and you've tried the pyramid weight, next would be a actual spider weight itself where the wires can actually be bent out. And you make all these here. These are all handmade here as well, right? That is correct. We started out making our own weights because going to the counter and spending eight, nine dollars per weight was getting very unreasonable when you're on a fixed income. Being in the military myself, I knew what it was like and only being able to use a little bit of funds per paycheck to go out and enjoy myself. So I got into building the gear myself and found out dealing with a local fishermen where I was at, they liked the gear as well and they started purchasing it for me. And that's kind of where this all evolved from was the actual spider weight. Yeah, I came in today and he was actually bending the metal, I believe, right here to make these types of weights. That is correct. Very cool. We, we build all these by hand. We don't have any machines, so everything is custom made without the custom pricing. One of the things that Albert told me is that he ships his stuff all over the country. I mean, look at some of these hooks, man. That is nuts. It, the 28 odd circle hook, which is this one, is one of the popular ones. Our 24 odd are extremely popular. There's many of the guys out in Florida that are catching 14 foot uh, greater hammers. 13 foot tigers, 12 foot tigers, and they buy the gear from us because they're locally, they're not supplied. So with us, they know that they're getting a great hook and they've already been putting it through the ringer time and time again and producing monster catches. Yeah. That's just cool. This is all primary shark stuff, right? That is correct. This is mainly all for shark. 
and I've never caught a shark. Actually, I have. I caught a real small shark, but nothing that you would use a hook like that for. But one of the things that he does is he puts kits together if you're looking to catch certain types of fish. So let's say you want to go out and catch drum, you want to go out and catch snapper, or you want to catch pompano or whatever. If you were wanting to get into fishing, like me, one of the things I used to do, and I already admit to it, is I'd go to Walmart or I'd go to Academy or Sports Authority or Dick's and I would just fill up a basket full of stuff that I thought would work. And rarely is that a successful tactic. You might catch something, but you may not catch exactly what you're looking for. And Albert actually has packages that he sells and ships out all over the country that include the tackle, the equipment you need to be successful at catching different types of fish. So guys, let me know. I know this is a whole departure from my trucks and my RVs and my towing information, even though I bet we could probably take some trucks out on the beach and get people unstuck, or if we catch a big enough shark, we could use a winch to pull the shark in. Um, I don't know if we do that or not. But anyways, guys, give me your opinion in the comments below. Do you want to see more fishing stuff? Do you want to see more, uh, you know, videos of me going out with these guys and catching some big stuff? Or do you want to see a shark on my channel? I don't know. Guys, let me know in the comments below. Albert, I really appreciate the time you took with me today. It's a pleasure. And, you know, we're going to come back here a lot, even if I'm not recording. But if you guys want me to bring Albert back on the channel, I'd be happy to do so because he really, really has some kick-ass stories about some of the things he's caught, some of the things he's done. I believe you hold a record too, don't you? Actually, I used to hold, hold the land-based world record for catch and release of a 12-foot-6 tiger from Bob Hall Pier. We tagged and released her, and she was an awesome, majestic catch. So that's pretty cool too, and I'm sure I can find some pictures of that as well. All It's on the International Land-Based Shark Fishing Association page. Um, they've got pictures there, and actually on YouTube you can find us under uh, Monster Shark Tag and Release. That's awesome, man. Again, Albert, Thanks, Hard sir. Life Fish Bait and Tackle. Thank you. Nice meeting you all, and uh, hope to see you all again. If you haven't had a chance, guys, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I think I'm going to buy this big bobber to go fishing. <laughs>